Hi, my name is Eric DeMilt. I'm a development director with Obsidian Entertainment. I'm here with Aiden Karabiak, one of our class designers, uh, and today we're going to talk about the Paladin Cryomancer. Uh, we got gameplay footage here of a run through of a solo dungeon from our recent technical beta weekend, the Landberg Catacombs. Um, and Aiden, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Paladin kind of charging right into combat here. That's Onslaught. Uh, it's your one key. And that'll dash you into combat. It's upgraded actually on this Paladin now. So that's why you're seeing uh, all the enemies get pulled into you. So Paladin, Tank, Class, pull all the enemies to you at the start of the fight. It's a good way to start keeping aggro. Paladin's a combo class. You see her going through uh, different attacks. Those are on your left and right mouse button there. Uh, a bunch of different attacks that you can do off of that. You've got a Seal of Light, which uh, throws an X forward, deals damage in a line. Uh, if you've got a really strong single target attack, probably the core of your single target combo, uh, called Punishing Bolt. You'll see that get used a whole lot here. Uh, you've got Celestial Shield, and you can see when the uh, Celestial Shield is destroyed, that actually detonates and does damage to all the enemies right around you. Cool. One thing we should point out is in these solo instances, right, we can do a lot of environmental puzzles. So uh, as you saw that uh, that uh, object in the center of the room, right, the player's gone off, used it to get a buff, right, giving her a combat advantage. Uh, and that'll come up again in later boss fights throughout this instance. Yeah, so we, we see we've got the buff right now, lasts for a little while, uh, usually probably increasing your damage here and also give you uh, heals depending on which one you end up getting. Um, there we go, that's the Punishing Bolt attack. And of course we've got dashes here. You can see uh, we've got kind of contextual cues that pop up whenever the Paladin's energy gets low. Uh, you'll have that Q icon come up for you uh, that lets you use your Holy Ground, which essentially makes it so all of your abilities can be cast without consuming energy. She's, she's fighting these mobs, right? Occasionally health globes are popping off. These allow you to restore health mid-fight. So we're going to move on forward to one of the first bosses in the level. Again, this one's going to teach you a bit about uh, the environmental puzzles. So he's blocking your progress forward through the uh, dungeon here. So you're going to, yeah, literally blocking that door. So uh, you're going to do some damage, build up your energy there. Uh, and then as he summons adds here, which hopefully he'll do on cue. I'm sure he'll get there. He yep. definitely looks like somebody who wants to eat you. Uh, we'll see if we get hit by that ability or not here. Uh, but essentially what's going to happen with this fight, uh, he's going to summon these adds, as you're seeing right here, and as soon as you use the environmental component, he's going to stop throwing the adds. So you essentially chuck the acid in his mouth there, you know, he chokes on it a little bit and uh, stops summoning the adds. It also gives you a good opportunity to get your health back while he's doing that. Uh, all those health globes that dropped on the ground, you kind of run and get those before you get back in the fight. While those adds are up, he's going to be invulnerable for a bit as well, so you're going to need to take care of them. Uh, and then get back in the fight with him. You can see the Paladin going through a combo rotation there uh, when she's attacking him, focusing on those single target high damage combos. There goes another Jar of Acid off. It looks like he got more adds summoned in this time. Using uh, Waves of Wrath right there, it's one of your big AoE abilities. A um, couple good AoE abilities for the Paladin to take care of uh, large groups of enemies, but also to keep threat on them in uh, group dungeons. And getting pretty close on this boss, a little more than halfway finished, S still doing pretty well. Going back to the environmental puzzle, still getting them down, only getting three adds out. That's pretty good. If you're doing that, you're probably doing all right. If you get up to six or something, that's when you start taking a lot of damage. Yep. So she's going to go through a rotation again, keep burning him down. You saw her use a uh, ranged single target ability that's Righteous Verdict. It's your strongest single target ability. Pretty long cooldown on it, uh, but definitely anytime that's up and you've got a big boss monster or something strong in front of you, that's what you want to use. And there we go. We still have the boss blow up in a wave of poison there. Yeah, he's dropped a bit of loot. Okay, now we're on to our second boss. Uh, so this guy, once again, a bit different, right? He's not blocking a doorway. He's a smaller guy, one of the converted to Aswang. So uh, here's a guy who's got one of those uh, blood-sucking fly moth creatures on his head. So this artifact, similar to the one you saw in the other room, right? Uh, what will happen is periodically that'll push you back, and then you and the mob have a race uh, to get over to it, uh, use it first, get a buff and a benefit from it. 
I think it's a pretty cool mechanic here. Uh, and then as the fight goes on, it's going to get progressively harder for you to do. Uh, more of those orbs that, that are going to knock you back and prevent you from getting in there, uh, they won't prevent the boss from getting there. Uh, you know, it's going to make it more difficult for you to get in. Yep. And the boss here has a couple different telegraph mechanics. Uh, there you can see those orbs uh, Aiden was talking about, dodging through those. If you get hit by those, you're going to get knocked back. It's a cool thing uh, with the Paladin. If you time your shield, uh, it only is going to do the damage if the shield gets destroyed uh, while it's active. So five second duration, uh, you can pop it right before and basically absorb one of these big, normally telegraphed and very dangerous attacks and you get the bonus damage and the shield takes most of the uh, damage away from it. So here we go, let's see if we can do it. We got it a third time. moved out of the way of those big attacks most of the time. Yep, doing a pretty good job. Uh, there's one other attack that this guy does. It's like a scream. Uh, oh, and uh, this is uh, Waves of Anger, I believe. Uh, that is a, you press and hold that to do AoE damage. And here's the attack I was talking about. It's a scream. Basically does a lot of damage to your health, but also spawns a bunch of health orbs around the, the map uh, that you can quickly get your health back up. Uh, there you go, you see she got knocked back that time and our baddie got the uh, the buff. So you can see the boss is doing about two and a half times damage on even his uh, basic attacks now. And that's the uh, actual short term and vulnerability ability. Like this fight's winding down. Once again, you can see that's getting more and more complex. There's the Paladin's ultimate, uh, flying up into the air, crashing down into the ground for some massive damage. Going through those combo rotations, uh, you get the most damage out of each strike. Nearly there now. Might be able to finish him before the next pull. And I think right here you can probably, yep, yep. finish him before you even go. 